think about the last time you went on a first date. You got through all the usual topics in like five minutes, and then... The date was pretty much over. That's because you didn't watch hundreds of hours of conversation studies. Fortunately for you, I did. And I'm going to explain them to you in this four-part process. So let's imagine a conversation between you and the girl you are with on your first date. It all starts with part one, the identification. Identification of what you might think? Well, the type of conversation you are about to have. You see, some studies on human communication have shown that we can actually have three different types of conversations with other people. The first one is the social conversation in which we just want to express who we are. My name is Walter Hartwell White. The second one is the practical conversation in which we talk about facts. Basically, we use this type of conversation just to express or find out the information we need. And the third one is the emotional conversation in this type of conversation, we just want to express and talk about our feelings. For our quest, we will focus on the last two types. But why the hell is it so important to know this random stuff? Because you can't have a good conversation with someone if you two are talking on two different wavelengths. You might feel a little smarter now that you have found out about this, but there is still a question you should be asking yourself. How the hell do I know what conversation she wants to have? Usually on a first date or in other situations, when you and the other person don't really know each other, every conversation starts as a practical one because you just want to know things about the other person. But here's a problem, usually practical conversations are pretty boring. You don't want your conversation to be boring because that might cause her to do some things like grab her phone, start scrolling, and before you know it, the conversation is over. So if you don't want that to happen, you just have to move to part two, be interesting. Now, usually what many of us would do is start the date with a back and forth interview style conversation. She might ask something like, what hobbies do you have? And you will tell her something like reading, and then you will ask her, what about you? That's stupid, don't do that. Especially because this part of the date can be so much entertaining for both of you. But how? By using something called the picture superiority effect. Basically, people remember and engage more with information when it includes more details. So instead of answering reading, you can create a story around it. I've actually been into reading since I was 11. I like to do that, especially in the winter evenings, while also having a cup of hot chocolate. This type of answer makes you look much more interesting. Now at this point, after you understand this effect, you can go back and forth with a lot of topics and you will have a good conversation. But we want a great conversation, so we can't just stop there. You have to link this psychological effect with another one called the endowment effect in storytelling. Basically, this effect tells us that people value things more when they feel they've contributed to them. So you need to involve her in your answer. How do you do that? Well, at some point, you leave open gaps in the conversation. You do this when the time is right, especially during more emotionally charged topics. Let's say she asks you about something like your relationship with your ex. First, you take a small break before answering, then you can even repeat her question in order to build up her curiosity. Something like, my relationship with my ex, well, you know it's a little bit complicated. I could tell you, but I don't want to bore you with the details. So at this point, she will be the one insisting on getting an answer from you, rather than you simply hoping she'll be interested in your life stories. Now this action will not only make her more interested in what you have to say, but also will slowly build up a more emotional vibe, which you will need in order to move into part three, the connection. This is basically the most important part of the conversation you have with her. At this point, you make a full transition from a practical conversation to an emotional one. But for this transition to happen, the first thing you want to do is use Socratic questioning, aka why. Why? 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 Asking why multiple times can help someone uncover ideas and emotions they didn't realize they had. You are probably a little confused, so let me give you an example. If you ask someone what their dream job is and they answer with something like, I want to be a farmer, you can simply ask, why? The person in front of you might tell you something like, because I love animals. Then you continue asking, why do you love animals? Because during my childhood, my dog was the only one that showed me unconditional love. Boom, you just got the other person to open up. You see, this might seem pretty easy to do, but you might apply this thing and have the girl in front of you refusing to answer the question and open up. So what can you do? Well, there's a small psychological trick you can use, the but you are free technique. When you ask someone a personal question, you can give them the option to not answer and that would actually make them more likely to answer the question. 
By using all of these techniques, you can get into the most personal topics like childhood memories, life goals, regrets, and many other things. So, you made it. The date is almost over, but now you have to make her wish for a second one, otherwise all those efforts go to waste, so now it's time to move on to... Part 4, Last Effect. The first thing you must have in mind while ending a conversation is the final emotional state. How do you do that? By using the reciprocal liking effect. In English, it has been discovered that if we believe someone likes us, we tend to like that person even more than we normally do. So before leaving her home, be a gentleman and express how much you enjoyed your conversation with her. But don't stop at being a gentleman, be an intellectual gentleman and make sure to give her an even stronger psychological reaction to want a second date. Apply the Zigarnik effect. People remember unfinished tasks better than completed ones, so between the last lines, leave an open-ended question, something like, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this later next time. Also, make sure the topic is interesting for her. And with all those things, you just became a master at having great conversations. And if you're lucky, your day might even end in a kiss. She gives you the signals. You lean in for the kiss, but then you fuck it up because you had absolutely no idea about the science behind kissing. Fortunately for you, I have a video just for that. 